today i would like to cover three main things one i want to take you through the different kind of work that is happening in the social sector and beyond uh, where data is being used in meaningful ways second i want to also give you some takeaways so that you can go back to your organizations as well as implement those solutions in your organizations and the third is to give you an overall sense of challenges that are existing in the sector when we talk of data today a couple of years back a student team analyzed data for 7000 msf volunteers to help msf better allocate doctors to mission the idea was to improve their experience and likelihood of going to a particular mission and the exercise was actually very simple what they did was they took the database of all of these volunteers they matched the skill set of these volunteers to the required skill set in a particular region they also matched the time that it would take uh, to be present in a particular location and how many times have a particular volunteers volunteer before and sent candidates who were matching on these two criteria in those regions the outcome was very simple there was a better retention so imagine a condition if you have an emergency uh, medical condition happening in a country and there are doctors coming from abroad and they leave your country without providing proper aid so this small exercise done by a group of colombian students actually solved for that problem of improving retention by msf it's just one simple example but there are many more exa- many more examples of how data is being used across there are philanthropies there are non profits that are using data on a regular basis to drive small and big decisions right from operational decisions in ngos like akshay patra where how do a uh, truck go from location a to location b so that the last location gets hot food to even very big organizations like the gates foundation trying to see how do they invest dollar 8 million uh, in the agriculture sector data is being a backbone to all of this and if we want data to drive the transformational change the equation is extremely simple it's a three component equation the first thing that you need to drive this change is to have the accurate relevant and easy to understand information that can give you the right insights the second thing that you'll do is you'll make effective decisions on top of that information and the third thing once those effective decisions are made you'll drive meaningful action from that only when we do these three things will we be able to achieve better outcomes now focusing on the first part of this component which is the accurate relevant information india does census once in 10 years you know the last time bpl census was done in india 2001 2002 was the last time when uh, bpl census was done the most the implication of that is that today if people want to avail pds and their list their name is not there in that list they are not able to avail pds so data backdated data doesn't really help uh there are examples in which there is data that is out lying out there so if you have you guys seen narega's mis online have anybody read reports on narega so in narega what happens is every work site every job card is openly available for people to access and understand whether this person has gotten job or not the act mandates it but how many people actually go and access that how many people actually make use of that information it's in a system which will involve at least 15 clicks before you reach a person so the accessibility of the data becomes a challenge so dice is the data set that gives you a school report uh, that gives that gives you a report of every school in every village in india so imagine one data set had uh, census data set gives you information for every village there's another data set dice which gives you information of schools in that every village and we tried to match that those two data sets two machine readable data sets match at 15% how can we drive decisions on top of these data sets right <coughs> to solve for this what we need to all focus on is we need to make sure that our information is being born digital which means that data is not first captured on a paper format and then transferred into a computer and then sent to a website it has to come through a system where we get the data and it's shown directly online we live in the world of big data where we are able to book a cab in seconds and we know what the fastest route is but and we can also find the best restaurant around us but we cannot get information about our beneficiaries about people that we are trying to serve in real time there are existing systems that lets you do that we are not yet leveraging it so the first thing that we all should focus on is how do we make sure that the information that we are trying to capture is actually being born digital 
once the data also comes in the next step that happens is how do we use that data data lying in silos lying in isolate places is as good as having no data so what do you do then most organizations today focus on creating annual reports they become uh, rather than being proactive on data they become uh, reactive on data monthly reports uh, annual reports is something that we call out but are we using data to its existing potential can this data be actually put to better use i'll draw three case studies from the work that we have been doing to give a sense of how data can be used for effective decisions the, i'm also going to put it down thematically the first thing that i'm going to talk of is course correction how can you use data to course correct your programs to course correct the way you're looking at um, implementation of your program of or or program of some other organization the second thing that i'm going to talk about is how do you plan investments and the third thing i'm going to talk about is how do you monitor your progress and how can you do it at a very large scale so the first case study is actually uh, very close to brian's work in up uh, there is this organization called ihat indian health action trust which is working with tpsu so technical support unit of the up government what they are trying to achieve is that they're trying to see how we can reduce maternal mortality rate on the basis of doing better healthcare delivery india unfortunately is the country that has the highest rates of uh, highest maternal mortality deaths in the world so what i had uh, wanted to do was he, they wanted to understand where is the process breaking there is an infrastructure there are healthcare centers there are nurses that are being appointed there are doctors that are being sent where is the process breaking in this so what they did was they followed a five step process they did a sample selection they figured out 25 specific district that they should target then they collected some base data so the base they set up was to understand the infrastructure the registration of nurses and doctors the their background their previous training so to so as to gain entire context about who are these people who are carrying out these deliveries the third thing that they did was they did knowledge assessment they took tests for of these nurses as well as of the doctors to assess whether or not they are actually they actually have the knowledge to carry out a delivery the fourth thing that they did they did skills assessment even though they have the knowledge are they able to deliver uh, when they are in a in a delivery room and the fourth and the fifth and the most important thing that they did they observed the 400 steps that it takes to deliver a child so it's crazy but a delivery can last from a couple of hours to even days uh some of our uh, volunteers who have actually registered or given or reported on these deliveries have reported for as long as 28 hours straight um so how did they figure this out what they did was they collected data so imagine a delivery room a nurse is trained and is sitting to record who is doing what and how are they performing this action they did this for 2 years to collect enough data to understand which specific steps are being broken across the state and what they got out of that entire data is what is actually causing the real death in the delivery room is it lack of training is it lack of skills or just simple negligence the report is out there and you should go online and uh, look at it at the ihat on the ihat website every second three more indians experience the data for the and internet for the first time india is became becoming increasingly digital increasingly data driven 77% of urban and 92% of rural use smartphone as a primary device to connect to the internet now i will want to spend some time and tell you more about how can you drive data driven decision making in your organization we work with 150 organizations and we figured out that if you really and truly want to be a data driven organization uh then these five tenets can actually help you become that The first one is to say that don't waste time reinventing the wheel. Often we have found organizations trying to reinvent the wheel, trying to figure out or create solutions, technology solutions that uh, might not scale later on. There's a reason why Facebook, Google, such evolved products, technological products, still have 60 to 70 percent of their workforce coding every day, engineering every day to improve their product. So don't reinvent the wheel. Leverage platforms, leverage solutions that already exist. so that you can quickly implement those solutions in your organizations create data systems not for measurement of impact but for measurement for impact there's a huge change of mindset that we require right now in the sector 
to create solutions that are measurement for impact. What that means is that rather than doing a end line or rather than doing a end of the year survey, why don't you collect data as activities are done? That way the data will flow in continuously and you'll know at any instance how your program is doing. It will also embed in the workflow of your people. Often you'll find field volunteers complaining. They're always trying to rush and submit that report. Embed that data collection in the way they work. If they go to an Anganwadi every day, make sure they do three data and point, points of data entry. That will solve for their problem of, you know, looking back and then thinking about what data should I enter. It will also improve the way, the quality of the data that is coming in for your organization. Only collect data that you really need. Oftentimes, when we feel that we have to create a survey, we have to create a data collection form, we start to collect with 30 questions. We then feel maybe it's good to add 10 more questions, then another 10 more questions come in and it becomes a lengthy data collection form which people on the ground don't want to fill. So how can you shorten it and keep it as simple? Create a lot of implicit data. If you have asked for your savings and if you've asked for your income, you don't need to ask for expenditure. That is an implicit data point that you can capture already. So create implicit data points. The fourth and the, one of the most important po points is to take time, iterate and create a data system around your people. Humanize data. Don't create a system that sits ideal, that's a separate task to do. Make it an embedded system. Pilot your questionnaires, make it localized. The best people or the best forms of data will only be collected when people relate to that data or they are able to make sense of what they're collecting. And the final and the last point that I would like to make today is create a data culture. Data shouldn't be a thing that you do at the end of the month, at the end of the year. It should be a thing that you do at the end, at every weekly meeting. It should be a thing that should make you take decisions on every step of your program, of every step of your process.